So we're going to start talking about the basics of forces, and when you talk about forces, you have to start with Newton's laws of motion. This here is Isaac Newton. He was a smart guy. Uh, we learned a lot about uh, physics from him. He liked apples, some people say. Uh, the story goes that he was sitting under an apple tree, and an apple fell on his head. And from that, he figured out, ah, the same force that brought the apple down on my head keeps the moon in orbit around the Earth. That seems like a bit of a stretch to me, but I wasn't able to find out if that's actually a true story or not. Uh, but he did invent calculus. He was trying to figure out gravity, and he invented calculus in order to have math that actually worked uh, to do what he wanted it to do. So when you're learning calculus, thank Isaac Newton. And what we care about right now is that he came up with three laws of motion, and as you'll find out as we go through this course, he named a lot of stuff after himself. Uh, the units of force are Newton's. Uh, the Newton's three laws of motion. This whole, whole bit of physics that we're learning is called Newtonian physics. Uh, so his name comes up quite a bit. Now before we get to the laws of motion, we've all tried to start something moving, tried to push on an object and start it moving. We've all noticed that the heavier an object is, the harder it is to start it moving. And we're not even talking about friction. You could be pushing something on ice and the heavier it is, the harder it is to start it moving or stop it moving. And that's because of a property called inertia. Inertia is measured by an object's mass. So the more mass something has, which is related to the weight, but is not the same, the more mass something has, uh, the more it resists a change in its velocity. Now Newton's first law says that an object is going to travel at the same velocity, either moving at a constant speed and direction or stationary. It'll maintain a constant velocity unless it's acted on by an external force. So there has to be something to start something moving or to stop something moving or just to change its velocity. And just because there's one force acting on it is not enough. There has to be a net unbalanced force. You can't have a bunch of forces pushing on something because if they all balance each other, nothing's going to happen. It has to be an unbalanced force. Uh, but uh, this plays into what we learned about inertia because we call this the law of inertia because you have the more mass an object has the harder it is to change its velocity. Now Newton's second law talks about if you're applying a force to an object how much acceleration are you going to get and he says that any time you apply a force to an object you will get an acceleration proportional to the force you apply it. The more force you apply the more acceleration you're going to get. But also, mass has something to do with it. The more mass something has, the harder it is to get it to accelerate. So if you apply the same force to two objects, the heavier object is not going to move as much. Really, the more massive object is not going to move as much. And we can summarize that using the equation F equals ma, where F is the force, m is the mass, and a is your acceleration. Now, Newton's third law says that uh, all forces occur in pairs. So if uh, two things are in contact, say you are walking, you exert a force on the ground, the ground also exerts a force on you. And those forces are equal and opposite. So they're the same magnitude and they point in opposite directions. Every force occurs in pairs. There's always an equal and opposite force to accompany each force. Now this seems like uh, all forces would cancel out. So take the example of walking. Uh, when you're walking on some grass, your shoe pushes on the grass and the grass also pushes on your shoe. Those forces are equal and opposite. They don't ever cancel out though because they're acting on different objects. Your foot is, push, is pushing on the grass and the grass is pushing on your foot. If they're acting on the same object, they would cancel, but because they always act on different objects, they never cancel out. And here's a good example of Newton's first law at work. Um, if you have a cat, you know that a cat at rest always remains at rest and uh, you don't want to try to move it. 